first to enter the den is Dublin-based entrepreneur Sharon Keegan. Let's do this. Who claims her business has a powerful effect on her female customer base. My product has changed people's lives for the better. I want Sarah and I'd love to, girl. We empower women every day to be their best self. And Sharon's planning on wowing the dragons with her rather colourful pitch. Let's go. Let's go. go for girl. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hi Dragons, my name is Sharon Keegan and I'm here today to ask you for £100,000 for an 11% equity share in my business, Peachy Lean. We sell confidence in the form of spandex and nylon. In 2015, I was pregnant with my first son, Liam. He was a whopping 10 pound baby, and this left me with a mum tum and curves on curves. What was supposed to be a really, you know, joyous time in my life was overshadowed with postnatal depression. And I found my happy place in the gym. And it was here, actually, that I found that there was no product on the market that would act like shapewear, but was comfortable enough like activewear. I've tried everywhere, I couldn't find it, I designed it myself. So to date, we have sold 290,000 euros worth of product. In the first eight months of this year, we have surpassed our last year's turnover. And I'm really looking to partner with The Dragon now um, for the UK market. I'd like to thank my beautiful models and open the floor to any questions. Thank you very, very much. A very personal pitch from mum of two, Sharon Keegan. Nice and colourful. She's offering 11% of her active shapewear business. I'm excited to see what this is. In return for a £100,000 cash injection. Tej Lalvani wants to clarify the USP of the business. Sharon, I'd really like to understand what is completely unique about your product. Other brands, they all market to quite a young demographic. The demographic that I market to are from 27 to 46. The woman that the bigger box brands have actually forgotten about. And it's really the woman that's had a baby, have a, a mummy tom. Our tagline is love don't budge because you put the product on and the jelly just doesn't move. Sharon. Hi. I am exactly that consumer you're talking about. You know, I've started running over the last year and I honestly feel, as a consumer in that space, nobody is targeting me and talking to me. Yeah. So, if it holds that jelly in place like you described, that sounds yeah. fabulous. Yeah, no, it is. It's one of the best products I've come across on the market. I wear them every day. You come across very credible. You know your customer. You're probably very good on what Sarah would do on TV shopping and you're there, you're explaining the product, who it's for, what it's for. But when that product sits on a photograph, how do you get that message across to the consumer? We are very um, driven on social media. Instagram has been really successful for us, Facebook advertising as well. And we ask women at the start of their journey with us to tell us their ultimate goal and dream. One woman hadn't left the house in four years and she emailed me with a photograph in a pair of leggings to tell me that, oh, sorry, that, um, that she walked her daughter to school for the first time. Whew, sorry. Take a deep breath. Um, like we're living in really tough times and people are struggling. And yes, it's spandex and nylon, but we're, we're so much more than that. Passionate words from the emotional entrepreneur who believes she's offering more than just a fashion fix. But it seems Peter Jones has questions about her business's identity. Sharon, the quality is outstanding, but I can't remember the brand name. So I'd like you to tell me again, what is the brand? So the brand name is Peachy Lean. What was the rationale behind Peachy and Lean? So we serve people peachy from lean. peachy to lean, yeah, 6 to 26, yeah. We have the heart feature on the back of the legging and we want to really inspire women to love their shape no matter what size. What I see with that local identity is clearly a heart. Yes. But I don't see a peachy lean identity. I think Peter's bang on about the branding. 
A lot of the really successful brands have, whether it's a particular stripe that they have or they have an outline here or... Signature. A... Thank you very much, Tuka. They have something in there that absolutely says, from a distance, when somebody's wearing it, you absolutely know what that brand is. I 100% take on board about the product. It needs to be much more punchier. A setback for Sharon, as Peter Jones and Deborah Meaden suggest she should be braver with her branding. Now, Tej Lalvani wants to know where the financial muscle for the business has come from so far. How have you funded it all? I was made redundant in 2015. I got about 7,000 euros redundancy money. And also, I have another investor, and he invested 20,000 for 2% equity share in the business. The last eight months, you said you've already surpassed sales and you've done very well. How much of that is actually down to the COVID situation and people staying at home and wanting to buy this type of clothing? Yeah, I, we did definitely see an increase in sales after March. The business was thriving, but I didn't have enough stock. And the reason for that was because March was a very difficult time for me, sorry. Oh, sorry. My brother died two days before lockdown. He's 35 and he's two young kids. So sorry to hear that. Sorry. Yeah, well, look, it's remarkable. You've gone from strength to strength and you've grown the business and you know, that's great. I imagine he'd be incredibly proud to... He's here literally with me today, so, yeah. Emotions are running high in the den as Sharon wears her heart on her sleeve. But has her entrepreneurial spirit inspired eco-warrior Deborah Meaden to invest? Sharon, I'll tell you where I am. I love what you're trying to do, but this is a this is me and not you moment. Having decided I'm going to buy no new clothes at all this year, um, I have made a decision to only invest in um, fashion businesses with a big sustainability piece. And what I see in front of me just doesn't fit my position of the moment. So, for my reasons, I won't be investing. I'm out. Deborah Meaden can't find a synergy between her eco-crusade and the clothing concept and she becomes the first dragon to decline a deal. Is the fashion business a better fit for Peter Jones? I think some people deserve a chance in life, and you are definitely one of those people. Thanks. But I'm still not receiving the brand. So with sadness, and it is sadness, I'm going to say I'm out. Sharon. I want to give you a lifeline. The problem I've got is a million pound valuation. You've got this business turning over a couple hundred thousand pounds. So how did you calculate your valuation? Our, our current investor bought in at that price, so I had to offer the same price as what he has bought in at. At the moment, we have three new products ready to launch funded by Enterprise Ireland. They've also offered that if, if I get investment today of 100,000... They'll match it. They will match it, yeah. Which doubles our cash into the business. Our three-year plan with your investment would see us with a four million pounds turnover. I don't doubt all that. However, to go into a million pound valuation, it would be against all my principles. So what's it worth then? I'm thinking, Deborah. Are you going to think for me? No, I'm Thank just you. wondering what it's worth. I'll just have a think about it. Tuka Suleiman hints at a deal, but leaves the entrepreneur to stew. Does TV shopping guru and fellow gym bunny Sarah Davies still see Sharon as a kindred spirit? Right, here's what I think. You have a USP and you are a fantastic storyteller. Thank you so much. And I absolutely think even if you don't bag your dragon today, you will go and achieve that four million sales in three years' time. 
What I would like to help you with is how do we not make that four million in three years, but 10 million. But I know very, very little about the fashion industry. So I am going to make you an offer, but it is 50,000. So half the money for 10% of the business. Because I feel like I have the skills to help you so far, but just with me alone, I think you, you're missing that little bit of knowledge from the fashion side of the business. Sarah, thank you so much for the offer. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Sarah Davies offers half of the £100,000 Sharon needs. But for almost double the equity, she came to the den to give away. How are folks? We need another 50 grand. <laughs> Is Tej Lalvani willing to partner her in a deal? It seems you've touched on a particular market that really appeals to a certain segment. And despite all the challenges I've had, you've been able to create something that will, I think, grow into a, a good brand. So I'll be happy to share with Sarah on this. So I'll offer you the other £50,000 for 10%. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Sharon now has an offer on the table for the full investment from Double Dragon Pairing, Tej Lalvani and Sarah Davies. Will Tuka Suleiman be prepared to offer up his fashion expertise and match their bids? I'll tell you what I think could be the magic for you if there was three of us. One, two, three. Tej can offer you great online Sarah would be your amazing ambassador. TV shopping and the Jelly Belly. I've got the Jelly oh, Belly. No, I didn't say the Jelly Belly. You know, I could make one phone call tomorrow and you'll be on johnlewis.com and you could be taking 30, 40 grand a week. But you've got to give away a bit more. I'd want to give you a third of the money for 10%. So it'd be 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%. And you'd have the dream dragon team. Sharon came into the den, offering just 11% of her business. Will the promise of a dragon triumvirate tempt her to give up nearly three times that amount? I don't even need to think about it, because, like, that's a deal. <laughs> you going for the three of us? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great choice. I'm so, so happy. <laughs> I hate that we can't hug. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Sharon exits the den with the £100,000 she was seeking and a rather peachy dragon powerhouse on board with the business. <laughs> I think dinner's on us tonight. Are you happy? Yeah, really happy. Zara is the poster girl for this product. Myself and her are going to make such a great team. And to have a manufacturing partner on there and then Tej with e-commerce and digital side, we are going to kill it next year. Never have I been more pleased that somebody has walked out of the den with an investment. Hi, Dragons. My name is Jack Kniver. I'm the founder and CEO of PureSuite. I'm asking for £75,000 in exchange for 5% of my business. PureSuite is a company that focuses on bringing to market the highest quality sugar-free products, while not compromising on taste and staying 100% natural. Our main product is Pure Sweet Zero, which is a natural sweetener that looks and tastes like sugar, but has zero calories and harbors no bitter aftertaste like many other sweeteners do. To date, we have turned over more than 1.5 million pounds, and we are on course to turn over 1.4 million pounds this year alone. This company is fast growing, and I look forward to one of you joining this exciting journey. You may taste the products, and I look forward to any more questions you may have. Ooh, Ooh. now you're talking. A range of naturally derived sugar alternatives is the offering from Jack Nyber, who's seeking £75,000 in return for a 5% share in his business. Well, watermelon sherbet. So this is sugar-free, zero calories, good for your teeth. Yeah, but will it taste as nice as your sherbet dip? Try it. That's why it's there. 
while Peter Jones tucks into his sherbet dip. Tej Lalvani has first dibs on the questions. Jack, very impressive what you've done in the last year, incredible. Thank you. What is the actual ingredient? What's the base of this? Our main product, Pure Sweet Zero, has erythritol. Erythritol is a sweetener that is naturally occurring in watermelons, pears and grapes. We turn some of the sugar that we eat into erythritol, so it's actually there before you've, even, before you've eaten it. The taste is fantastic. Thank you. Is there anything in there that isn't healthy? No, nope. it's been tested by the EU, by World Health Organization, and it's passed all the tests and it's actively good for your teeth as well. Jack's product appears to have hit a sweet spot with Deborah Meaden. And with an already tasty turnover, Peter Jones is eager to discover more about the young entrepreneur's projected profits. Well, Jack, I'm going to hone in straight on the numbers. So, you're going to turn over 1.4 million this current year. Yeah. And what will be your gross margin and net profit? For this year, we'll look at a gross profit of 650 to 700,000 with a net profit of 350,000. Wow, Jack, that's amazing. And you're doing over 100,000 a month sales at yeah, the moment online. Yeah, doing 20, over 28,000 a week. I've never seen anybody look quite so low-key about saying, I've gone from nothing <laughs> to turning I'm over so 28,000 a week. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> come on, it's, this is exciting. <laughs> it's quite daunting to uh, be on here, so. But it's really impressive what you've done in the last two years. Thank you. So, Jack, give me the next three years. What's your vision for the business? I want to grow this business to be the future Tate and Lyle. That's my, uh, that's my ambition. Stratospheric sales means Jack's plans to transform his company into a household name could be more than just a pipe dream. But Tuka Suleiman wants to find out if he's operating in an already crowded market. Do you have any competitors in the UK? There are competitors, um, but no one's set up a brand that's specifically focused towards this, and that's what we're trying to build. Jack, I completely understand in terms of the product. The yeah. first thing you'd need to do is build a brand. Right. This actually, at the moment, doesn't look like a retail brand. One of the other big sugar substitutes they're very clever about it. It goes in a glass jar and it looks like sugar, and this looks like a, something in a plastic. It is fully recyclable, the, the <laughs> it, bag. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> but I think it's got to go on a shelf. It's got to stand up against everything else sitting on that shelf. Yeah. Jack, I think you've got a great product and I think you are a great entrepreneur. Thank you. I could envisage putting that in the pot next to the teapot and my husband would never know that I'd changed it. <laughs> However, it's not something that's, that was within my portfolio of aspirations. So with all due respect, not one for me today, but good luck with the business. I'll not be investing and I'm out. Things had been going smoothly for the sweetener entrepreneur, but Sarah Davies has stirred things up by declining the deal. Is the dragon whose business empire has health at its heart poised to get this pitch back on track? Well, Jack, look, I'll cut to the chase. Yeah. I think you've got a huge opportunity, and really the key is to just make this massive and as fast as you can to really create that brand that you're thinking about. I've had experience in building a global brand in the health space, and I think this is what that can be. And I think I can help you with all the retailers. So I'm going to make you an offer. I am going to offer you all of the money, £75,000 for 10%. OK, thank you. He was one of Jack's most wanted, and it appears the admiration is mutual, as Tej Lalvani offers to invest in his business. 
Will Tuka Suleiman be prepared to join the young entrepreneur on his zero sugar crusade? Jack. Yes. I like what you do. I could definitely help you. One, we've got distributors all around the world. Two, we've got accounts opened in everywhere. Sainsbury's, Tesco, Asda, you name it. So I'm going to give you all of the money for 10%. But I know what I can bring to the party. All right, thank you. Jack, if I look back, it's quite strange. Even though I'm not the oldest dragon, I feel like the oldest. Because <laughs> I've been here the longest. If I look at some of the journeys of people that have walked in, you will have heard of Levi Roots. I have. And you know his success. You might have seen Bare Naked Foods. You probably know it's a multi-million pound business today. So I've been on this kind of journey. And when you say you want to create the next Tate and Lyle, that makes me excited. Because I believe in you as a person. And I think we've got a chance of creating together the next Tate and Lyle. So I'm going to offer you all of the money for 10% of the company. Things go from good to better for Jack as he secures an offer from his other dragon of choice, Peter Jones. With three bids already on the table... Deborah, have you gone? Because your fingers are going, so... They go for one or two reasons. I love it or I hate it. A Deborah Meaden's fingers pointing towards a deal or a dismissal. Jack, you've done really well to go this far, but you need to now make some really specific changes to move it away from a product into a brand. And that's the bit that I would get personally very excited about. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, that's 75,000, for 7.5% 7 of the business. Thank you. Can I go to the left? I've lots to think about. Jack now has four competing offers to consider. Tej Lalvani, Peter Jones and Tuka Suleiman are all seeking 10% of his business. Whilst Deborah Meaden has undercut her fellow dragons with a smaller 7.5% request. I am so glad that I'm not caught in the middle of all of this. That's all I'm saying. But with the sweetener entrepreneur only looking to hand over a 5% stake, he has plenty to ponder. All right, dragons, thank you for your offer. It's tough. Um, would there any of you dragons be willing to split, go half-half with another dragon? I'd split. And I'd probably split with Tej. Well, look, we've got a couple of investments together. If I was to split, 10%, 5% each, you get two dragons for that. What the dragons have is a black book. We all use our black book accordingly. I have accounts opened in all the retailers. What food brands have you got in retail? Well, I would say I've taken brands, not, not food brands. Peter, with all due respect, you know, if you're a shrewd businessman, you can adapt to any... I, think, you know, I, I disagree no, with you. I, what I I'm saying think... is, if you want to sell um, cameras and uh, laptops on e e internet, millions of pounds, go with that. Just, but if you want to build... By the way, food, but if you want food, to build, food but, across a wide range, there's nobody that's, that's done fine, more. If you want to build... I think we can all do that. I've got an amazing team that support all my investments. And all I'd say, Jack, in the time that it took Tuka to say that, I would have got you into Sainsbury's. <laughs> If I'm being honest, um, I was looking for a combination of two dragons that I feel that I've had the most exposure to retail and the health market, um, which would be Peter and Tej, if you would work as a combo. Not to disrespect any of the other dragons, 
Look, Peter and I have several investments together. We work well together. Um, I'll agree to that. Right. Jack, I need a sugar fix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy at the 10%, 5% each to split it with Tej. OK. Because I do believe in you. I think this is going to be very, very successful. In that case, I'll accept your offer. Yes! Yay! Great. Brilliant. Thank you, Jack. Can't wait to start working with you. Thank you. Good luck. See you. Sweet success for Jack, who leaves the den with £75,000 and the backing of a duo of dragons with the expertise and connections to sugarcoat his global ambitions. This is going to be big. He's great. He's, he's phenomenal. He's that great. Really, it's going to really be big. Good. I feel overwhelmed and amazed and emotional. Having uh, Tej and Peter on board will help our company expand and will be a household brand. Whilst the pandemic has generated significant challenges for many entrepreneurs, it has created new opportunities for others. Business partners Gary Giles and Alan Watts believe they're perfectly placed to capitalise on the recent growth in home working. Right now, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, if I'm, if I'm honest about it. But at the same time, I'm raring to go and we just want to do something positive for the world. Oh, I like it. Like a Lego set. Gary and Alan's product isn't child's play, but it might make it big in the world of construction. I think it's potentially revolutionary for the building industry. I know a couple of the dragons are particularly keen on recycling, and I think we've got a product that ticks boxes that very few other products do. Here we go. Here we go. Hello, Dragons. I'm Gary Giles, founder of Orgel. And I'm Alan Watts, head of production. And we're here seeking a £50,000 investment for a 5% share in the company. So, what is Orgel? Well, it's a rapid building system that takes waste like this, turns it into L's like this, which we then turn into anything from a humanitarian shelter to a garden room like this. Building with Ogle gives you lots of advantages over traditional build methods, particularly its ease of use and its speed of assembly. Now, I'm going to build part of the wall while I pass you back to Gary. Let's be honest, we're all addicted to plastic. What we've done is built something here that is 80% waste material. Recycling needs a hero, and its name is Ogle. While Alan builds the wall, um, if you like to open your boxes, we have some little samples. An easy-to-assemble construction system with planet-saving potential is the offering from Gary Giles and Alan Watts. If you pull out the other piece, the, the yellow piece, that's on the floor, and then match the yellow to the yellow who are seeking £50,000 in return for a 5% share in their business. I think Sarah won that one, you know, <laughs> if, 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 if you're going to make it a race. <laughs> can, you, can you cut that, please, from the table? <laughs> <laughs> An ultra-competitive Peter Jones may favour some judicious editing, but when it comes to a money-making opportunity, Tej Lalvani always demands the full picture, and he's first with the questions. Alan, Gary, hi. Hi. Well, it looks like what you've created here is quite interesting. Can you take me through the process of how it works, how you collect the waste, where you collect it from? The material is, is, is waste polystyrene. The waste comes from several different sources currently. Your TV, your, your, your fridge. When they deliver now, they have to take the packaging away. That goes to a recycling plant, and that's where that material generally comes from. So, well, look, I mean, the construction industry is shouting out for sustainable building materials. So what is the cost versus the standard materials? Cost works out cheaper. Is this compared to a brick system? Or yeah, yeah, compared okay. to a brick system. Right. Because a square metre of, of double skin with, with insulation in the middle of it is about £180 a square metre. That will sort of work out of, as, a, as a sale price roughly about £140. 
That's a good start. Yep. Gary and Alan appear to have devised a sustainable and cost-effective alternative to bricks and mortar. Now, Sarah Davies wants to discover more about the pair's plans to convert their big idea into big bucks. Guys, I think it's wonderful. OK. So, have you come in today with a, this is our business model, we've got a plan, yeah, we've got this is what we're going to do, or is it a case of you coming here and saying, we've yeah. got this awesome product, we kind of need to know the best way to take it next? The garden building market in the UK is worth over 100 million. Companies are looking to have their employees at home, OK? This is a solution. And is the model that you'll go out and build it for them, or is the model primarily you want to sell them as kits ready for people to build their own? Personally, I think it's a, a, a DIY product. I feel quite excited by that, because I think that opens the market up a lot. Alan Gary, first look, I think it looks ingenious. Yeah, yeah, we, we think so. Right. <laughs> That's good. I'm pleased that you're proud of your product. But what other products are out there that are 80% recycled? I, I, we know of no other recycled building, um, anything like this. And have you got the patent on how this comes together? Yeah, we're at the uh, sort of, um, national stage of, 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 of patent. We have three very small objections, that's all we're dealing with now, with the European patent office. Yeah, small objections can become big ones, though. We filed against those objections last week, but um, we have the, the letter there if anyone wants to have a look at it. I'd actually like to have a look at it yeah, while sure. Peter's talking to you. Sure, yeah. yeah. I love what it solves, um, and also the application. It looks really, really good. But there's one dragon that's got very good experience in this marketplace okay. that I would like to listen and hear before I decide to invest. Sure. But OK. Initial reaction's very positive. OK. Um, so, I'm going to tell you where I am. The principle of this, I think, sounds fantastic, but can you see a future where the production of polystyrene reduces and we start using alternative sources, which then kind of is a issue yeah, for no, this? Yeah, no, I, I yeah. accept what you're saying. I mean, over the years, there's been lots of alternative packaging come up with but polystyrene packaging for certain things is still the best mm. method of packaging it. The ingenious bit for me is actually the recyclability. But I'm afraid you're talking to a bit of a purist because allowing us to produce more and more polystyrene and finding an end use for it doesn't stop the use of polystyrene. You know, in fact, recycling in about five years' time will be a, start being a bit of a dirty word yeah. because all the talk is about stop producing the stuff. You yeah. know, it's, it's, so, so there will be supply issues and that will knock its selling point out as far as I'm concerned. So I'm really sorry, but I'm, I'm not investing, I'm out. An unanticipated blow for Gary and Alan, as the den's doyen of sustainability predicts the demise of polystyrene, the raw material around which the pair's business revolves. Will tech titan Peter Jones share her analysis? Alan and Gary, I started off by saying I think it's ingenious. I'm finishing by thinking it's ingenious. But I've also really listened to what Deborah was saying as well, and I think that really makes sense to me because I'm in that sort of world of the technology and I see the televisions and we see the, the packaging already diminishing yeah. almost monthly, yeah. which is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to wish you well on your way and say, sadly, today I'm out. Alan Gary. Great idea. That, that we've established. But at the end of the day, I, I need to know whether your product is, is commercial. It might be a great idea, but it might be crazy priced. So ideally, this is for garden sheds or outer buildings. What would this one cost? About, about, about 12 grand plus fat. How much? 12,000 plus fat. To me, it sounds expensive. OK. And I think the real issue for you will be the fact that not a lot of people are going to pay out £12,000 for that, OK? Yeah. So, I'm not going to invest and I'm out. Thank you, David. 
further disappointment for Gary and Alan as two more dragons join Deborah Meaden in declining the deal. Sarah Davies has been scrutinizing the pair's all-important patent application. So is their invention protectable? Right, I've had a good read through and I actually feel really comfortable that you're in a good place with your IP. Good. Um, okay. The great news is, I absolutely love the product. And seeing the patent gave me the confidence that you have the foundations to build a, a really successful business. So I will make you an offer. And I will offer you all of the money for 10% of the business. OK. An offer for Gary and Alan. All of the money, albeit in exchange for double the 5% equity, they were originally looking to give away. Is Tej Lalvani prepared to match or even better it? So guys, I think you've definitely got a very interesting product. And where I think I can help you is the consumer aspect. Yep. And I build consumer brands for a living. Yep. And so I'm willing to make you an offer. OK. I'm going to show you all of the money. Mm -hmm. £50,000 for 10%. OK, thank you. Shall we go and talk to our wall? Yeah. yeah. Talk to your wall, see if it talks more sense than the brick one. <laughs> <laughs> it's decision time for the construction entrepreneurs. The next few moments could prove pivotal for the future of the business. I think you're both great. I'm not going to argue about the percentages, but would you consider going half each in it? Because you've both got something to bring to the table. I think you're right, between us, we have different skill sets in different areas, but both with the same consumer focus, so I'd be willing to do that. Tej? We both have um, areas that could complement mm -hmm. in the business, so I'm happy to share. We've got a deal. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Great. Excellent. Well done. Well, well done. Well, Very yeah. exciting. Good luck. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank Elbow you. pumps. <laughs> Success for Gary and Alan, who leave the den with the £50,000 they were originally seeking. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I think they're quite pleased. And the support of a duo of dragons with the consumer expertise to elevate their building business to a whole new level. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit emotional, actually. It's like, it's like... I could tell that. <laughs> <laughs> I think today it could be a complete game-changer. Sky's the limit. It's a brave person that enters the den with a business that firmly targets, but also just as firmly excludes, one half of society. But that's exactly what our next entrepreneur is presenting to the Dragons. Brave Girls Book Club. I'm a mum of boys. It's not speaking to me. What we have to offer is a very exciting and dynamic product in a fast-moving market. Molly Masters may have a very specific audience in mind, but she's less sure about her strategy in the den. I don't think I have a game plan. <laughs> I'm just hopefully land a dragon. Hello Dragons, my name is Molly Masters and I'm the founder of Books That Matter. I'm here today to ask for £50,000 investment in exchange for 5% of my business. The current English GCSE curriculum offers a choice of 25 available books for study. Only five are by women. If women and girls cannot see themselves represented at school, in the media and on the bookshelves, then we have to take matters into our own hands. 75% of book buyers are in fact women. 
So With Books That Matter is an award-winning book subscription box putting women's writing in the spotlight through unique reading experiences. We have turned over over £800,000 to date. We have a dedicated online following of over 50,000 people who get involved in our bookish conversations on our book club style platforms. We've also recently launched our Brave Girls Book Club for girls between the ages of eight to 12. You will find some boxes inside your boxes for you to have a look at. Thank you so much for your time. A book subscription box service that aims to empower and inspire women and girls is the proposition from Molly Masters. Your pitch, did it go as well as planned? That was the best I've done it, I think. Thank you. No, well done. Oh. She's asking for £50,000 in return for 5% of her company. Dad of four girls, Peter Jones, is first to quiz the female literature flag bearer. So, really interesting. I had no idea 80% of books at GCSE level written by guys. Yes. And you said 75% of, of book women? buyers are women. Well, there's the opportunity, isn't it? Yes. Um, <laughs> so how does it work in terms of subscription? So we have options for a monthly rolling subscription, which is our most popular option. So How much is that? £17. And then our multi-month subscriptions, which are three, six and 12 months, are £15 a month. And what do I get then every month? One book by female authorship and at least three gifts from independent female creatives and artists. OK, I want to get into the detail of where the business is today. What have you turned over in the last 12 months? So that would be £356,000 and a net of 62000 And over the next 12 months, what is your forecast for the next 12? We're at year three now. So our modest forecast um, is one million for um, turnover for year four, 1.6 for year five, and year six is two million turnover. OK, and how much have you put into the business? Um, I have my due diligence here if you would like me to check in. No, no, my due diligence is you. How much, how much is that? I, I don't, I wouldn't have a figure off the top of my head, but around £10,000. No, how much money do you have left? Um, we have 200000 in the bank. How much? 200000 Molly keeps her cool and reveals a healthy bank balance built from humble beginnings. But it seems that Deborah Meaden has some concerns about the sizeable slice of the market that she might be missing out on. So, I mean, I, I obviously love the um, promotion, certainly, of women. But why would you restrict your audience? It just seems to me a little bit of a shame. If you're trying to open a window to female authors, why would you target your audience so heavily towards women? Because okay. that excludes a huge chunk. I perhaps wouldn't say that the ultimate purpose is to level the playing field because my opinion is it's to amplify voices. And I think women being the biggest book buyers are the receptors of that. We can see the value in it being a unique female only space. I don't know, I'm feeling a little disappointed about the brave this pink one here, it's got lipstick in it and it's all very excluding. I mean, you know, Sarah, you've got boys. Uh, I've got you've... two boys and my boys wouldn't want to read books that came out of a pink box. No. So I guess you are excluding me as a consumer. And, and that might be purposeful and you're wanting to apply it to a niche, but I think that's possibly the point Deborah was getting at yeah, there. It's no, a, of course. It's a big audience mix. I think we're trying to combine the feminist with the feminine and that there's maybe nothing wrong with that being front and centre. I just feel that it, it's, it speaks directly to women and, and that's where we're at. Pink isn't making the dragons wink, as Deborah Meaden and Sarah Davies wonder if Molly's feminine boxes are a marketing mistake. However, Tuka Suleiman is rather taken with the entrepreneur's endeavours so far. It's very impressive that with very little money, you've started the business, you've got subscribers. You should be proud of yourself. I have an online women's magazine, and at the moment, we provide that content for free. 
And I'm just wondering whether, uh, are you predominantly selling books? Or do you think that if you provide a different content, that would add value to your business? Yeah, definitely. There's so much content that we would love. We do a blog already, but yep. in terms of lifestyle content, which I guess is what you're getting at, I think that would be a way to also just yep. break through that barrier of it just being about the book club. Good, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you agree with that. Molly, on Instagram, there's a number of female book clubs. Mm -hmm. What is it that separates you from that type of competition? I think the exclusive partnerships, after having such growth and such opportunities with publishers, I think we're now seen as the market leader. We get kind of first look at things like Sally Rooney's next book, things like that, that just aren't being offered to our competitors. Okay. Molly, I, I like this, but, but I think that's the problem. I like it, I don't love it. You've made me feel compelled to address my own behaviours yes. by making a conscious effort to maybe buy more female authors, but you haven't made me compelled to want to invest in you. So for that reason, it's not one for me today, and I'm out. Sarah Davies closes the book on investment and the entrepreneur loses her first dragon. And it appears Molly's open approach of targeting women and girls has also sidelined Deborah Meaden. Molly, I'm going to follow up quite quickly with that. Of course I want to bring a spotlight onto more female authors, but I don't want to do it in a way that I see as more divisive. It drives us more into saying male, female. So I'm afraid, Molly, for, for that reason, um, the good news is it's not because you haven't got a good business, but it's because I can't buy into the ethos of it. I won't be investing, so I'm out. Thank you. Molly, I don't agree. I just love what you've done. And I can clearly see that you're on a cusp of a movement here that ultimately could have a paradigm shift. I'm contemplating it because Tuka's about to make you an offer. Um, Am I? You're 100% going to make an offer, Tuka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm going to invest, so don't let me put you off and make an offer, guys. It's, it's actually quite a tough one. Mm. Um, there's lots of things I think that you can do with this. But even if you end up hitting your million and your 1.6, which is a massive challenge, that still would mean, even if I had 20, 25% of the business, I'm kind of bordering on just getting my money back over three years, and that's the risk factor. So I'm going to politely decline and say I'm out. Peter Jones mulls over an offer, but decides the rewards don't outweigh the risk and becomes the third dragon to depart. Tuka Suleiman has already sounded out a possible way to boost Molly's business. Will he offer some financial support and sound out a deal? I'm contemplating how I can add value. You've got a business that makes money. At 5%, really, the problem is I'm not going to get my money back that easily. Um, but I'm going to make you an offer. I'll give you the whole 50,000, but I want 30%. But I'll also let Stephen share, if he wants to share with me, okay. for 15%. Thank you so much. I think what you've done is phenomenally impressive. I, I just love when I meet entrepreneurs that have a real sense of mission behind their work. I think your branding is amazing. I understand your business. I know the space. However, I don't think that for the effort that I'd have to put in, I could possibly make a return that would make that worthwhile. And so I thank Tuka for the invitation, but unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm out. Okay. But I'm also going to say that I don't think you should give away 30% of your business for 50 grand. Thank you. It's now time for the wall. <laughs> wall time. Thank you. Molly has one offer to consider, 
but in return for his £50,000, Tuka Suleiman is asking for six times the 5% of equity that was originally on the table. Will she take those terms or try to negotiate? OK. <clears throat> so thankful for your offer, but the maximum that I wanted to give away from the business was between 10 to 15. Is there any way you would...? The problem is, the return that I would get, uh, it, it would take far too long. I, I would say I would have to stick to where I am. Then I would have to say that I'll have to decline. In that case, I would take the knock on the chin like a gentleman. Thank you so much. OK. Thank well you. Thanks, Thank Molly. you. Well done. Good luck with uh, it, Molly. Well done. Thank you. Great pitch. Plus. Tuka Suleiman refuses to reduce his terms, which are too much for Molly, and she leaves the den without a deal. I always said coming in here that if I was given an offer, I wouldn't walk away, but I do think that the percentage that was asked was just a bit too high. Tuka, we can read you like a book. We knew you were going to make an offer. Yeah, yeah, when you said that, <laughs> I was <laughs> OK, I'd better put on my poker face, then. You haven't Is got that a your poker, poker face? <laughs> <laughs> Last to face the dragons is 29-year-old Sam Jones, who's here to showcase what he thinks is the silver bullet for monetizing our own online data. I'm incredibly passionate about my business. It helps people, it empowers people, we're doing good. So I really can't wait to share this with the dragons today. Hello Dragons, my name's Sam Jones, I'm the founder of Generate and I'm here today to ask for £60,000 in return for 10% equity. The open secret within the advertising industry is that it's built on exploiting our data. Like when you mention something to a friend and the next thing you know you're being bombarded with adverts for it. Everything that we do online is being tracked to follow our movements and understand our behaviour. Then they collect this information and sell it. But I believe that people should have a choice to stop this from happening, or even better, to earn from it themselves. Generate gives people two choices. Privacy mode, this is where we stop all companies from tracking them online. Or number two, earning mode. In return for sharing their data with us, people earn points, and they can redeem these points for products, vouchers, or donations to charity. And right now, the average user is redeeming between five and 25 pounds in rewards and value per month. When a person chooses to earn from their data, they tell us what they're interested in. We then use this information in order to tailor all of the adverts that they see anywhere online so that they are based on their interests. Generate has started a movement that empowers people and I hope that you'll come on the journey with us. Thank you. Mm. A platform which gives its users control of their data is the online proposition from Sam Jones, who's seeking £60,000 in exchange for 10% of his company. Hazel Alvani wants to know more about Sam's cookie-crumbling technology. Very smooth pitch. i just like to understand in terms of the business, what is your revenue model? So everything that we do is about empowering people to have control and to be able to earn from their data. So we tell them that companies and advertisers want to pay to show them what they're interested in. So if you share your interests with us, we'll be able to target relevant advertising. We're very confident that we will be able to drive at least between five and 10 pounds per user per month. Our business model is that we give 80% of the revenue back to the user and we take a 20% cut. And I assume it's using cookies, is that right? When no. you go on websites That's and right. then they track you from that. 
No, so that's what happens right now. Yeah. So a cookie is one of the, the best tricks in marketing. Cookie means tracker. So when you go to a website and you see that annoying pop-up where it says, allow us to drop a cookie on you, if it really said allow us to drop a tracker, you'd say no. But actually what you should do next time is click on the see vendor list and you will see all of the companies that you are allowing to track you. And on many of your favorite websites, the list is literally hundreds and hundreds of different companies. Right now, if you use the world's largest search engine and you want to stop them from tracking you, it will take you 17 clicks to do so. If you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing. Yes. With your software installed, yeah. does it prevent it from adding a tracker or a cookie onto you? Yes. An impressive start for the platform pushing entrepreneur. But Deborah Meaden now wants to find out if Sam's idea is still just a work in progress. How long has it taken you to build the platform and how close to finished is it? So uh, we spent a full year and a half before we even soft launched it last year. By the end of last year, we had about 10,000 weekly active users. At this point this year, we've got about 30,000, so we added 20,000 more. Is there a competitor out there? There's a company in the US who would be the closest to us. The key point of differentiation is that they reward users with cryptocurrency. So what kind of market penetration have they got? Um, they're valued at about $135 million. They have about 6 million users. So there's a hell of an opportunity. There will be a billion dollar business built in this space. And it may be that the first one who gets there wins it. Deborah Meaden discovers a US competitor is already a multi-million dollar enterprise. And Tuka Suleiman certainly appears to be enjoying what he's heard so far. Sam, I've been in the den for six years. This is one of the best pitches that I've ever heard. Thank you. Now, tell me about your plans to raise more money. Because what, what, what I don't want is to invest now and find out in two weeks' time I'm diluted. So where we are right now, with no more um, raising of capital, I believe we can end next year with 311,000 users and the following year with a million. However, I think there could be a good discussion to have with existing shareholders to say, guys, if we can add another zero on the valuation, should we raise a couple of million quid and go out and capture the market? What about someone like Google coming into this? Because it's pretty much their technology. They could quite easily develop a system whereby they monetize people by allowing data to be shared. Could that happen? Any startup that said they weren't slightly worried about Google would probably be lying. They're a 10 ton gorilla, that's for sure. But the refuge that I take is there was a browser extension last year that was acquired for $4 billion from PayPal. And what they did was they added discount codes at checkout. Google could have built that, but they never did. Similarly, we see that there is an enormous opportunity for us here, and I wouldn't rule out Google as a potential acquirer in the future. Sam, I think the business model is, is really clever, and it kind of feels like individuals become ultimately their own affiliate and receive the lion's share of a commission that your business is ultimately going to pay them. So I think it's really, really interesting. And the timing of this it is now. I actually think that Generate could be a movement which is really saying something in the market because that's when you get real penetration. So I don't think you're going to be surprised that the quality of your pitch, the size of the opportunity and the excitement has generated my interest. So much so that I'm going to offer you all of the money, all £60,000, for exactly what you've asked for, for 10% of the business. Thank you very much, Peter. Tech tycoon Peter Jones gives Sam his seal of approval for the business and makes the unusual move of accepting the entrepreneur's terms without a fight. Will the other dragons see the investment opportunity in the same light? Look, I think what you've created is truly the one solution 
for the issue that we have. You know, I think I could help you with raising money for this, with access to a huge number of tech investors. So I'm going to make you the same offer, all of the money for 10%. Wow, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Sam, this is about getting a message out. This is about being trusted. And I think your timing's absolutely bang on in terms of plugging into that concern that's beginning to register in the back of people's minds. And you add on top of that, actually, even better than that, I can earn some money out of my data. So I, I, I absolutely love it. And I'm going to offer you all of the money for 10% of the business. Thank you very much. Outstanding is the word I would use to describe everything about this pitch we've just seen. And I knew that you would be walking out of here with an offer. I don't sit in this chair and pretend to be the techie expert, and I'm sure I am not the best dragon to partner with you on this venture. And it is only for that reason that I'm not going to make you an offer, and I'm out. Sarah Davies bows out of a deal, but the entrepreneur still has three dragons poised to invest. Tuka Suleiman had some high praise for Sam's pitch, and it appears he's ready to raise the stakes. Sam, have you got offices? <laughs> uh, rental offices. How about free offices for you for a year? In my office. I'm going to give you all of the money, 60,000 for 10%, and offer you free accommodation up to six, eight people for a year. OK. Thank you very much. Oh, um, I think I'll definitely take a moment, if that's OK. Please take your time to the, the wall. Uh, thank you very much. Sam has received a barrage of offers from the Dragons, with everyone except Sarah Davies competing to get their claws into a deal. <clears throat> They've all offered £60,000 for 10% of the business. But Tuka Suleiman has also thrown in free office space for the entrepreneur's team. Mm. Um, thank you all so much. This is absolutely amazing to be in this position. Tuka, I love the enthusiasm and the energy that you clearly have for Generate. And Peter, I know that you have incredible expertise in this space particularly when it comes to scaling, would the two of you be willing to share the deal at 5% each, with the offices included? I, w I would, yeah. Yeah, I think I so. Done. It's a deal, thank, thank you, very, you much. very much. Brilliant, well done. Brilliant. Really looking forward to working with you. An exquisite pitch, Excellent. brilliant business. Thank you. Peter Jones and Tuka Suleiman win the deal, and the software entrepreneur leaves the den with the £60,000 he was seeking. Wow. This is such a game changer to have two massive dragons on board. Just helps to make sure that my business is a household name in the near future. I've always been brought up by my parents, and I even teach my kids. You've got to have humility, not gloat but it's so difficult not to gloat after oh, that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Who says free office space doesn't work? Absolutely. <laughs>